What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today I'm pretty excited. We're going to be adding a new light to the 30 gallon Triton Method Chater Reactor Test Build. Now if you're not familiar with that build, I will put a link in the description below. You can check it out after this video and kind of get caught up on what's going on. Now if you guys remember the build, I actually have a Zet Light UFO currently over it. But unfortunately that light just doesn't put out the par that I'm looking for. As well as that light has been used for my Zoa quarantine system, uh, as well as mushroom quarantine system. And I use it at frag swaps for uh, you know selling coral. So uh, basically it's not something that I can keep over this tank long term. So I needed to find another solution. So with that being said, I went ahead and reached out to a company called saltwateraquarium.com. Now I've been buying from these guys for the last two and a half years, and I usually get my j to Apex adapters, my power heads, my dosing pumps, and various modules like the Lunar uh, Simulator module for the Apex, all that kind of stuff I've gotten through them. And uh, the service is great. The shipping is really quick because they are located in Pennsylvania. Now I know most people buy stuff on the internet to avoid the taxes. But for me, I'd rather buy quality because I've never had a piece of equipment ever have an issue through this company. Uh, the shipping is always quick. The box is never damaged. And uh, I'd rather pay the 6% tax here in Pennsylvania knowing that I'm going to get something from a company that I trust. So I went ahead and reached out to the company via email just to see if they wanted to help me out with this new build. Now, I got an email back within a couple hours saying, sure, we'd love to help you out. What were you looking to get? I told them I was looking for an HD Prime with a uh, mounting bracket. And sure enough, within 24 hours, this light was on my doorstep and ready to be installed. Now, if you guys haven't purchased from this company before, I highly recommend you check them out. Now, they do offer a rewards program. Anybody can get 5% off their uh, next order. Basically, say you spend $100 today, you'll get 5% of that being $5 off your next order. Now the real kicker is that if you are a veteran, you get an additional 5% on top of that, giving you a grand total of 10%. And 10% uh, is a pretty big deal. It adds up quickly, specifically in this hobby with the amount of money that we spend. Now the only thing is you just have to provide your sales receipt with your uh, military ID or proof of ID, um, either your VA card or something like that, just to prove that you are a veteran. And then you can go ahead and get that discount off towards your next order. Either way, guys, I will put a link to them uh, in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out and tell them that Fish of Hex sent you. All right, so let's go ahead and set this light up. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and attach it to the tank mount. Now, I did have a choice between the flex or the rigid one. I'm not a big fan of the flex uh, mounts. I don't like the way they look. They seem to unflex over time, if that makes sense. Um, and I just like the rigid ones. I think there's more controllability, and you can fine-tune the light the way you want it to. Now, with that being said, this mount was ridiculously easy to put together. It came with all the hardware, the tool, uh, the basically a little Allen wrench. Now, I do recommend, and I didn't do this, I, I kind of regretted it afterward, is go ahead and leave the bolts a little loose so you can make all the adjustments up and down and uh, forward and backward on the uh, mount itself. That way, it's not on the tank and you have to kind of um, unscrew the Allens and all that kind of stuff. Just leave it a little bit loose until you get the light over the tank and then do all your fine adjustments that way. Now, when it comes to mounting this light, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the exact same spot as the UFO. It's pretty much identical when it comes to mounting this. They have the uh, black screws there that add pressure to the back glass holding the light up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and keep it about 7 inches off the water. And I will be doing some power readings later in this video so you guys will kind of see what I'm running my AI Prime at and kind of seeing what power I'm getting throughout the whole tank. So stay tuned for that. But either way, guys, the mounting and setup for this light is super simple and it literally only took about 2 minutes. All right, guys, now that we have the light hooked up, let's go ahead and come into uh, the whole setup here uh, on the Internet. Now, before you can actually connect to the AquaIllumination.com uh, profile, you want to go ahead and connect your HD Prime to your local network. At that point, you can go ahead and um, then come on here to your uh, AquaIllumination.com, uh, make a profile, and then connect your HD Prime via your uh, serial number. So you guys can go ahead and follow the directions that are on that little card there, and you'll be able to set that up. Now, I, did, I wanted to bypass that because it's just uh, it's so uh, common knowledge for most people, and I didn't want to make the video too long. But either way, let's go ahead and get into uh, the uh, spectrum that I'm deciding to go with, as well as the par readings for that spectrum and the given percentages. So what I have here is the AB plus spectrum, or as close as I possibly can. Uh, get it to it's the SPS AB plus that's recommended now uh, bulk reef supply did a whole video on this I should probably find the link and put it in the description below so you guys can check that out but either way I tried to uh, get as close to that as I possibly could uh, and still get the color that I like I knew I knew that it was going to be a little dim so I went ahead and actually brought the cool white up um, from I believe about 25% up to 80 and I actually plan on bringing it to 100 plus percent once my Ekapora are kind of uh, used to the light and I can bring up and get a little bit more color in the tank kind of uh, visually for uh, my own my own needs but uh, other than that this spectrum seems to be pretty good so we're going to go ahead and do some par readings real quick and then we're going to come back and I'll show you guys how to set up the auto mode uh, so the light will pretty much do everything on its own all right 
All right, so we have our trusty PAR meter here from Senai Reef. I'm going to go ahead and test the PAR underneath the light directly underneath. We're looking at about 2100 PAR, which is, is pretty high. I know that the UFO at 100% was about 1600 PAR, so that's a pretty different, big difference right there. And then, of course, uh, right above the water surface is about 850, and then down at the top of the rock is about uh, 350 to 4. And uh, again, remember the whites are only about 80% and I could bring them up and get a little bit more, more par if I needed to. But right now, uh, looking at the, uh, the overall par, and I will post a picture with numbers so you guys can see that, but we're looking at about 380 all the way down to about 140 at the bottom of the rock there. And then the sand bed is just about 100 par. And that's perfect. I can grow pretty much any Acropora in that range and uh, I can expect good coloration with that. Now we're going to go ahead and obviously put that together with the Triton method, uh, the Chato reactor, and we're going to see, um, because we do have good par, we do have a good spectrum, and we're going to see with the nutrient control between the, all the systems put together, what kind of growth and coloration we get out of these Acropora. Now in the next video, I will be adding Acros to this tank. If you guys are on the live stream, you guys already seen the Acros that I've added, or at least got a general idea. I know it was a little bright uh, during the, uh, the stream there, but um, we're going to go ahead and fill this tank up with as much coral as I possibly can and uh, get growing. All right, now that you guys have seen the percentages in which I'm running the lights, as well as the spectrum and the par that I'm getting in the tank, let's go ahead and move over to programming this so it will take care of itself, and all you have to do is keep it plugged in. Now, this is the spectrum that I'm going to want to set up, and this is what you guys saw in the uh, video here. Now, basically, what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and click on Auto, and then this is what I currently have. Now, we'll come back to this here in a second. What you want to do is come over here to the right-hand side and hit Easy Setup. And then if you so choose, this is what I did. This was easy for me to do, hence the word easy setup. What you're going to do is go ahead and pick your sunrise time whenever you want the lights to kick on and as well as the sunset when you want the lights to turn off. Now you can select ramping. I like to only ramp for about an hour, but you can do whatever you want on that. And then, of course, your lunar cycle if you so choose to use it. And then what is important is you want to come over here and select those percentages. So you're going to want to move these up to whatever you uh, decide to work for best for your system and then go ahead and hit save. At that point, it will come over here and it will show up on a graph. Now let's go ahead and look at mine a little bit closer we have the um there was basically the sunrise is going to be at 10 a.m it's going to ramp for one hour and then be at full power or the designated power that i've selected here at 11 a.m at that point it's going to run all day long up until nine where it will uh, then start to ramp down and then finally be off at uh, 10 p.m. Now I like to run a longer photo period just because I'm down here. I like to enjoy the tanks and I've always kind of ran a longer than average photo period and I've never seen any ill effects with it. So uh, that's my setup when it comes to this. Now you can also come down here and select storms, which you guys will see here. I'll try to put a video up where you can see it moving, but uh, you can select the times you want storms. Um, you know, basically the the hourly or the time in which the storm is you can select uh the chance of the storm happening if you want it to be 100 percent and the intensity so you can select all that stuff and then just right click to turn it off of course make sure you uh, turn it on over here now another thing that this light offers is the lunar light you're going to want to set this so uh, that it uh, correlates with your um, sunrise and sunset because for whatever reason if it enter it kind of overlaps uh, your schedule is going to look kind of weird so uh, just make sure that you uh, do this if you so choose to um, set that up and it kind of goes with your uh, lunar cycle on your um, your time zone okay other than that guys that's it for setting this up of course you can set your time down here all that good stuff and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool light. I like the fact that I can control it here on the internet. I prefer to have it on the Apex just because everything is at this point. But uh, the light is awesome. And shout out to um, saltwateraquarium.com for hooking me up with this. I really do appreciate it. And um, I will put all his information in below, like I mentioned earlier. And you guys should go ahead and check him out. All right. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you next time. Peace.